What's up YouTube? Welcome to another video. Today is Monday, March 13th, 2023, and what an incredible weekend it's been. Uh, unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure you guys have all heard Silicon Valley Bank's gone bust. Um, all weekend, the Treasury and the Fed and banking regulators from FDIC were figuring out how to, you know, make its depositors whole. Uh, then just this morning, there was, uh, I don't know, some bank in New, another sort of crypto type bank in New York went bust. Um, yeah, this is like pretty crazy times. We have a banking crisis. And, uh, you know, it wasn't that long ago, Credit Suisse was under stress. So the, the entire Western banking system is, uh, is under stress. So let's talk about that. First, quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. Please do your own research. Consult with a financial advisor before making any investment decision like buying gold or silver or anything like that. Following any of the strategies I discuss on this channel, the channel's for entertainment purposes only. But I can say this, wow, gold and silver skyrocketed. Silver's up nearly 7% on the day. Gold's up over two, um, you know, we had that little correction in gold last week, and then all of a sudden, Wednesday came, uh, rumors about um, Silicon Valley Bank, um, bank runs and stuff like that. Gold started to rise, and then it really kind of popped today um, with the news of uh, basically, you know, the re bank rescue or whatever it is, and making the depositors whole, FDIC insurance and that. And they're really trying to stem the flow, stem the contagion. Um, I'm not really sure if it will work or not. I mean, it's a little early to to be able to say anything with any certainty. Um, I know back in 2008 and seven, a lot of banks started to go bust and, and eventually became kind of one too many, a bridge too far, a bank too far, and then it almost took the whole system down. Uh, my guess is that, you know, the, the powers that be, uh, banking regulators, politicians, those in the know at uh, finance departments, uh, treasury departments around the world, around the Western world anyways, um, they're kind of scared shitless about what's going on. And um, they have every reason that they should be. You know, we could end up in a massive deflationary bust or if they bail out the system, it could be, um, you know, cause like major high hyperinflation. Um, these are extraordinary times and extraordinary events, but really, to my mind, it's all just a function of a massively over indebted global economy and a bankrupt Western financial system. Um, everywhere you go, there's debt up to your eyeballs, and that just makes every little tiny thing that much more, um, or it makes every little tiny thing have the potential to cause a major sort of systemic issue and i know they say oh we fixed the issues last time there won't be contagious bank balance sheets they're all good well we know in canada what's on bank balance sheets um a whole lot of uh, houses and stuff like that um you know sure there's cmhc which we which which is an insurance so that if the if you know the bank won't get uh, sustain losses on on their mortgages that are uh, cmhc insured loans and stuff like that but the big question is is the scale of the problem is such that you know if if we experience a major housing crisis here in Canada will CMHC be enough or might it end up taking down the banks or even just one you know that would do it um and and then deposit oh we have deposit insurance you know in Canada it's up to a hundred grand in the U S it's up to two hundred fifty grand, but is there an, is there truly enough funds behind the so called deposit insurance to cover the losses I don't believe there is I think the governments are going to have to print money to fill in the hole so you'll get your dollars back eventually but you know what will they be worth really once after after an event like that my guess is pennies on the dollar um, welcome to you know massive inflation if not outright hyperinflation but you don't need to sound crazy anymore to say this and and my my own sense today is that um is that this probably this probably won't be the final straw to break the camel camel's back this won't be the you know the the big pin to you know uh, explode the balloon 
uh, that's been this massive asset bubble. Um, my guess is that it'll probably work out, um, but it is sort of a shot across the bow of, you know, these, um, you know, interest rate hikes uh, are starting to break things uh, and starting to break a lot of things. So um, it's it's all very uncertain. And I don't even pretend to be an expert in all this stuff or to even really know, you know, where we ultimately end up. But I do know, I do know this, um, you know, on a, over the past few days, um, I wasn't worried in the least. And a big reason is because, you know, I've made it a point uh, in my own financial life to be debt free and to live debt free, to own hard assets like gold and silver. Um, unleveraged. I don't use debt to buy these things. I just slowly purchase what I can afford, you know, from time to time, month to month or quarterly or whenever. Um, I have cash. I have money parked in money market funds. In fact, I was saying this on these videos, there's no reason to take big risks when you can sit back and comfortably get four and a half percent in a savings account at certain institutions or in money market funds. Um, you don't need to be all in on the stock market because um, it can really come back and bite you. Now today, um, my, um, you know, I had a couple bank stocks that were, that were, um, you know, getting beat up. Um, but then I had a lot of, and I guess my oil stocks, my energy stocks were getting beat up. Almost everything was getting beat up today uh, with the exception of, you know, my gold and silver miners, they were doing fine. Um, I have a Bitcoin ETF that was doing okay, covered call. So yeah, Bitcoin's up, you know, 15%. Um, you know, in spite of all of this pain, I'm not a huge Bitcoin, um, you know, champion or anything like that, but I do own a, a small position. Um, and uh, if it would have gone down a lot more, I probably would have added a little bit. My point is, is this diversification does matter. And in these uncertain trying times, it does pay to, you know, kind of have your house in order. You know, it's taken me a few years, really since 2020, to kind of clean up my own personal or my family's balance sheet. Um, we did have, you know, not tons of debt, but enough that I just wasn't comfortable. And if 2020 had been a lot worse, um, you know, maybe there was no, um, you know, cure or vaccine found maybe the virus was much more uh, severe than 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 we now know today uh, maybe there was bigger ramifications in the global economy and that um you know i think that we might have very well you know ended up destitute a few years after something like that so it's the game of of life and the game of finances is, is kind of no joke nowadays because we have real um issues that should concern each and every one of us, whether you have $1 in savings or investments or 1 billion uh, or 1 trillion or whatever. Um, you don't need to have a lot of money uh, to, to, you know, be aware of what's going on. I was just at the grocery store today. Some old man was saying how, you know, prices are high. Yeah. People are feeling it at the grocery store, at the gas pump, when they get their energy bills. Um, you know, bank statements and all that. Um, the cost of borrowing has gone up exponentially. Um, and that's causing a lot of hurt and a lot of pain. And I, I, I none of this is has really reared its head yet. Um, you know, we're seeing some problems at some banks. Again, what were their problems? They held long, long dated bonds and stuff like that. You know, the su supposedly safe stuff. Um, and that, that's what kind of gets you every time, right? Like in 08, it was, Hey, own, own mortgage backed securities, right? Cause you know, there's never been a housing crisis or on a national scale or scale or, or a global scale for that matter. There's never been, you know, so, you know, the, the default rates have always been historically low. So these are super safe. It's oftentimes, you know, the things that we think are super safe, um, that can, get us into trouble as well. And I just wonder, 
if one day, you know, people will focus their attention more on cash and realize that, you know, these dollars and that that we're holding, you know, they're actually not super safe. And I know from my my readings of, you know, past hyperinflations and that, um, most notably the one in Germany in the early 20s, um, it people, the average person didn't really understand what was happening um, to their fiat currency. You know, they they just didn't see it. They knew there was a problem, but, you know, their issues where they would they needed more higher wages and stuff like that. They needed more money then they needed to be paid more frequently um, until, you know, it was only after the fact that I think a lot of people really woke up to what was going on. I mean, if you had half a clue, you, you kind of you kind of made out like a bandit, you know what to get into. My point is, in today's world, there's no not a single currency on the planet that is really backed by anything tangible, like silver, like gold, and that's going to be a huge problem. All these fiat currencies are at risk of significant devaluations, um, and if for no other reason, you know that's a big reason why I hold gold and silver, physical. Gold and silver, as as well as some sprot, um, some some sprot funds that are you know physical, um, silver and gold and that. Uh, just because uh, you you don't know, it doesn't have to be a huge uh, portion of your um, of your total kind of wealth. It doesn't have to be a total uh, a huge portion of your total assets, but it should be some portion. Um, because at the end of the day, if it all goes to crap, you know, at least you have something tangible that that will retain its value uh, under the current monetary system or under a new one. Or if we go, everything kind of collapses and we just need to trade for things that we need. Um, I'm not saying that any of that stuff is going to happen. Um, but, you know, this is kind of stuff that you buy and you just put it aside, put it away. You know, if you're investing... A few hundred bucks a month slice a little portion of that towards some real tangible wealth and um and then you sleep at night you know i'm totally not worried about any of this stuff that's happening it's not great you know um i, I feel like a lot of gold and silver bugs are you know it's uh, you know you got you got a few ounces now you want everything to kind of collapse and and so it's, it's not going to happen that way um you know, this could go on for many, many years this way. This could take a decade, this could take 25 years. We don't, point is that, that we don't really know when the end date is, or even if we'll recognize it as, as we're going through this process. We know um, we're at, we live in a time that's very risky and that extreme outcomes or are, are the likelihood of them has never been higher um, in history, really, than it is today. And there's a lot of unprecedented things that have never happened before that are starting to happen now. Um, you know, it's how will all this work out? I, I want to believe as an optimist that, you know, human ingenuity will figure a way, a better way. I'm not sure that we need to level the entire system. And I'm not even sure that, you know, the BRICS and the China, Russia, you know, Saudi, Iran, you know, uh, axis and stuff like that if that's going to uh if that's going to herald a new era um these are big questions we don't know uh looking back in history these these things have taken years it depends on when you want to start counting some people have been counting since nixon took us off the gold standard in 71 um some people you know start dating it back to greenspan and stuff like that uh after the dot the dot com bust and stuff like that or since 08 09 so depending on 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 where you want to start counting uh it might we might be 50 years into it we could be 10 12 years into it we could be 25 years into it, it, it it's, it's all over the place my point is is that it really shouldn't matter if you're properly diversified and you have control over over what you're doing um yeah, so that's where um, uh, that's where my thoughts are on a day like today. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of panic depositors, and I mean that's unfortunate, but you know, to, to each his own, right? We in this world, we make our own decisions as adults. You know, we are making our own decisions, and we're ultimately responsible and accountable for our own decisions. You know, you can blame governments for spending too much. 
borrowing all this money and spending and printing and stuff like that. Or you can just sit back, see the writing on the wall and just sort of quietly prepare your own house and, and make sure that, you know, no matter what happens, um, you'll, you'll be able to survive it. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're somebody, uh, with modest means and stuff, well then, you know, there's other ways, you know, learn skills, um, learn relevant skills that, that can help you earn a living. Um, and no matter what happens, um, these are all things that we can all do to, uh, to prepare for, you know, what is ultimately an uncertain future. And, um, and our, it's my belief that we're probably going to have a pretty rough time working off this debt one way or another, through, either through deflation and bankruptcy and, uh, or will it be through, you know, a uh, massively high inflation? I'm not really sure if we're going to see crazy hyperinflation. I mean, no one is. It, it, there's a lot of things that need to happen. And I do feel like, you know, hyperinflation gets kind of tossed around quite a bit. Um, it's not to say that it could never happen, um, especially nowadays. Um, but we'll see. I just want to say, too, that, you know, gold and silver, they have been a store of value for, for millennia, you know. Here's an old Henry the Seventh groat, silver. You know, 500 years ago, over 500 years ago, this was money. Here's one of my favorite. It's an old King John short cross penny, 800 years ago. Now, this is what money was back then, tangible. I have old Roman coins in that. Gold and silver have been around for a long time. They have always been been uh, seen and recognized the world over as a store of value something that will protect your purchasing power um, and uh, and I believe that that still holds true today even though in the west um, people think you're crazy if you own gold or silver or if you own mining shares or or whatever um, but uh, on on the flip side of that is you have you know in the East, they actually do understand uh, the value of gold and silver and its role and function in protecting and storing your value, your wealth, the the fruit of your labor. And um, I mean, that's why there's been record amounts of gold and silver flowing from West to East. So my sense is that we are going to... Um, you know, much like the 1970s, probably Westerners around Europe, North America, uh, you know, the Aussies, New Zealanders and all that, we're all going to end up, you know, moving at least a portion of our investable wealth into things like gold and silver. Um, we've seen some pension funds doing that. We've seen individuals doing that. There is record demand for for these coins and bars right now. Um and what gets me is the number of like 10 ounce bars that are like being sold out. I mean, you know, that's not exactly giant hedge funds buying up 10 ounce bars. You know, that's, you know, probably family offices, um, you know, high net worth uh, retail investors. But anyway, um, those are just sort of my thoughts uh, today. I haven't made any more purchase. I've been actually wanting to pick up another ounce of gold, but I'm just going to hang back and wait, let the dust settle. My guess is that this probably isn't going to be the big one. Um, there are still bigger fish coming down, coming down the stream. Um, you know, we have a serious uh, issue with housing in this country, and that's not being reflected at all. And the financials, uh, economic statements from the government, from, you know, from banks and, and our central bank and stuff like that. So my sense is that that will probably be a big problem. But like I've always said, you know, it doesn't have to, you know, problems that can take down and affect us individually, they don't need to originate in the country we live in. You know, uh, I, I, uh, the UK collapsing might take down a U.S. bank that takes down the system or a Canadian bank or a Japanese bank and then Japan goes under. Or like, you know, we're living in an interconnected world 
um, financially and everybody is always we're all massively in debt and you know there are so many weak links in the whole chain that can cause a chain reaction and take everything down so anyways um that's all i got to say today thanks so much for tuning in like the video subscribe to my channel check out my website my road to wealth and freedom the link is in the description below